Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The Arctic is heating up in the wake of climate change, figuratively and literally. Due to the continuous threats by rival countries like China and Russia, the U.S. armed forces are learning different ways to properly generate, organize, and equip for Arctic missions in an unfamiliar and hostile environment. The U.S. Army lays out several plans with Arctic allies to ensure national interests and maintain regional stability. Every year, they carry out various exercises to enhance the readiness capabilities of the U.S. Armed Forces. Deploying forces in the Arctic is not an easy task. The USAF uses the Lockheed LC-130 to fly deeper into the Arctic to drop off supplies at remote research stations. The LC-130 is ski-equipped. It has skis to land on snow. Before landing, the crew carves an ice runway called a skiway for the aircraft to land on. The skiway makes it easier for the pilot to land an LC-130 carrying up to 80,000 pounds of cargo on the ground. The USAF transports snowmobiles across the Arctic region for various operations. The crew prepares a ramp and then drags the snowmobile aboard the LC-130. Later, the aircraft deploys to the desired location for operations. Snowmobiles extend the reach of the operators to the places where it would take days to reach by foot. This allows a military unit to infiltrate deep into an enemy area, perform missions, and escape without being detected. The paratroopers use snowmobiles in Arctic conditions for the casualty triage training which challenges the soldiers in their ability to respond to emergencies and secure injured soldiers. This training is a part of the annual swift response exercises, which are very critical for improving the readiness capabilities of the armed forces. The U.S. Army Alaska deploys air packages and paratroopers during multi-agency exercises known as Arctic Pegasus. Green light. On. These exercises enhance their proficiency in conducting Arctic airborne operations, mobility, and ground maneuvers in extreme cold weather conditions. They use the C-17 planes to airdrop Arctic sustainment packages. It is an airdroppable package that can provide shelter, transportation, fuel, and food for at least 28 soldiers for up to six days in extreme Arctic conditions. The C-17 has an 88-foot-long and 18-foot-wide cargo compartment that swiftly opens up and releases a small parachute, followed by Arctic sustainment package that drops onto the ground.
The U.S. Army Alaska is capable of quickly deploying a small Arctic force for missions like fixed site security, humanitarian assistance, or support to civil authorities. During the Arctic Pegasus, they also deploy paratroopers along with the Arctic Sustainment Package. Paratroopers are capable of boarding a plane in sub-zero temperatures and diving with almost a hundred pounds of equipment. They are trained to deploy on short notice and operate effectively in deep Alaskan winter. After landing across the drop zone, the paratroopers assemble their tactical equipment and recover their parachutes before moving to their assembly units. There are other ways to transport snowmobiles to the Arctic like ferrying them ashore for operations. The Marines gather the supplies and travel in susfees to the rendezvous. They use cranes to offload the snowmobiles from the ferries. Later, they secure the snowmobiles one after another for further operations in the Arctic. These demonstrations help the U.S. Marines and sailors enhance their capabilities to operate inside actively contested maritime spaces. After deploying troops and equipment via plane or ferry, the U.S. Army uses small unit support vehicles, SUSVs, for transportation on the ground. Bandwagen, a track articulated transport vehicle of the Swedish Army, is one of the most highly recognized SUSVs in the world. Almost 37 cold weather nations like Canada, Norway, and the UK use Bandwagen to carry troops and equipment for Arctic missions. The overall design includes a forward and rear compartment connected by a flexible center section. It can carry up to 17 people six in the front and 11 in the rear compartment. Bandwagon was specifically designed for operations in Arctic conditions. The designers provided it with a low ground pressure to avoid the vehicle bogging down. It can travel over soft terrains like snow while carrying tons of cargo. The total load capacity of the two compartments is 2,250 kilograms. However, the vehicle can additionally tow a trailer of up to 2,500 kilograms. Bandwagon is also used to transport equipment during a force-on-force -force exercise named Snow Panzer. The Marines conduct an operation check on RQ-20B Puma in the Arctic. RQ-20B was designed for missions like Search and Rescue, SAR, Intelligence, Surveillance, Reconnaissance and Targeting, ISRT, Counter Illicit Trafficking, and Maritime Patrol. RQ-20B Puma can prove to be an important recon element in hostile lands. Before the launch, the Marines set up communication capabilities on a bandwagon and assemble an RQ-20B Puma part by part. Later, it is thrown by hand into the air. 
The exercise Snow Panzer increases the Marine's proficiency in Arctic environments. The Arctic has strategic importance for the United States. However, it presents unique challenges to military mobility. The heavy-duty tires designed for rugged terrains are not efficient on cold, slick surfaces. Ice and snow aren't the only challenges for military vehicles in Arctic environments. The mobility is also affected during spring, when the frozen ground melts and turns into a muddy, swampy quagmire. The U.S. Army Engineer Research and Development Center, ERDC, conducts multiple maneuvers with wheeled and tracked vehicles to demonstrate agility in extreme weather conditions. From climbing a snow-covered hill to sliding a tank on snow, these experiments provide solutions for several terrain challenges that military vehicles face. ERDC is developing cold weather tires and mobility models that can depict ice thickness and snow depth. This helps them to predict which vehicles can perform where in Arctic conditions. Arctic conditions are tough for military vehicles like Humvees. The technology is progressing. As a result, the weight requirement to carry new equipment to complete missions is increasing. Humvees are being overloaded past their intended payload, which decreases their mobility and range. The U.S. Army is planning to replace the Humvees with Joint Light Tactical Vehicle, JLTV. The JLTV outperforms Humvees in every aspect. It offers an additional 2,500 pounds of payload capacity, better protection, speed, and performance. The U.S. Army is confident that these vehicles will be more efficient to tackle ambushes on snow. JLTV will allow the Marines to be more capable and lethal in hostile Arctic conditions. The plan is to field every JLTV in the Marine Corps by 2034. Russia is expanding in the Arctic by refurbishing airfields, adding bases, training troops, and developing a network of military defense systems. On the contrary, the Arctic capabilities and presence of the U.S. are negligible. This is because the U.S. neglected cold weather skills during two decades of war in Iraq and Afghanistan. As tensions are rising in the Arctic, the U.S. is expanding its military in the region. The Marines and the Army are conducting several exercises to improve their capabilities, like deploying paratroopers and personnel mid-air, and using snowmobiles and susfees to traverse deep snow. There have been several casualties during these cold weather exercises due to equipment failure. The U.S. Army is facing difficulties in the Arctic and requires major economic support from the government to avoid these problems. Only time will tell how the U.S. will contest Russia in the Arctic region. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.
See you next time.